Hello guys, bersama saya lagi dalam Alright Nova Channel. Saya, saya ingin membawakan uh, ucapan yang begitu padu daripada Datu Sri Anwar Ibrahim dalam satu program persidangan ekonomi antarabangsa yang ke-15 sahabat-sahabat semua. Ya, begitu padat intipati dan juga message yang disampaikan oleh Perdana Menteri kita, Datu Sri Anwar Ibrahim. Jadi sahabat semua, saya membawakan anda untuk menonton bersama dan juga uh, memahami intipati message yang disampaikan oleh Perdana Menteri kita ini. Tapi sebelum itu, jangan lupa juga untuk terus support orang yang dapat channel dengan cara tekan butang subscribe, like dan share. Semoga kita ikuti ya, dan juga tonton video ini bersama-sama sahabat-sahabat. So ini dia. Alhamdulillah. Wa tawfiqi wa utusami illa billah. الحمد لله الخائل ومن أحسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. سدرا أمي أم زحمة لك وعند كدوا دكتور زكفلي منتري تملا منتري تنتين دكتور تامر تانسي سام سودين Sheikh Abdul Rashid Bain Negara Tan Sri Zulkifli Razak Rektor Prof. Azmi Aslam dan semua Tetap-tetap yang muliakan Ada satu penghormatan Pada saya Untuk sama-sama terlibat dalam Acara yang penting ini Kerana seperti mana di Baca Quran oleh hari yang tertil tadi saya In uridu illal islah mastata'atu ya, Maknanya langkah kita untuk terus mengupaya peningkatan perubahan ke arah kebaikan Sedaya upaya kita Jadi termasuk juga lah uh, Inisiatif kewangan Islam dan bank Islam yang telah dikemuka sekian lama oleh tokoh-tokoh besar kita ingat uh, Omar Chapra, Natullah Siddiqui, Munzer Kaf, Umar Zubir, uh, Kursid Ahmad ini teman-teman yang terlibat secara langsung dulu tapi semua mereka tanpa kecuali merasakan sudah sampai kepada tahap di mana ada tuntutan islah itu diteruskan dalam konteks yang lebih menyuluh, iaitu makasih. Oh, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. As we gather today for the 15th edition of the International Conference of Islamic Economics and Finance, to have this opportunity to acknowledge the five decades of dedicated work by countless Islamic economic scholars, researchers, and their institutions all over the world. Much has been accomplished, but even more needs to be done, especially when we navigate in these post-normal times. I made reference earlier to the more comprehensive discourse on the Maqasid Sharia. And the pioneers Notably, Najatullah Siddiqui made the upsetting critique against the way we manage our Islamic finance and institutions. And we do recognize, and I believe in Malaysia too, the Bank Islam and other related banks and their windows did take impressive uh, efforts in this direction. But uh, we have to acknowledge the fact that this is not entirely the maqasid. The aim of Islamic economics is a beginning, is a critical beginning, but it needs to develop through islah mastata'atu in Islamic economics and finance. And um, that's why I think even, even um, trying to expand beyond just... Uh, the Islamic nomenclatures, we need to undertake 
a better understanding of what reform entails. I have to acknowledge and recognize that these pioneers put forward an action-oriented plan, agenda that possibly was too forward-looking for the times. And I personally experienced this when I was in government and um, the huge uh, concern, protests, um, and, and uh, negative comments. But uh, alhamdulillah, things have changed. Meaning, over the last 30 years or so, Islamic economics that was promoted as holistic development agenda has been separated from the advances in Islamic banking and finance. The rich ethical Islamic economic ideas and concepts became maroon in the hallowed halls academia and talk fest, while an overly fixed centric, that is to say, narrow and legalistic oriented approach in Islamic banking and finance prevail in commerce and industry. This has led to the imputation that Islamic economics and finance is being a patchwork. Now don't worry, I'm being a bit rather provocative this morning to compel you to discuss and um, deliberate on these issues further. Critics charge that it is mere rhetoric lacking in original substantive content other than the recycling of conventional traditions, partly true, no different from the pious platitudes delivered in religious sermons. Some detract detractors have gone even further, labeling Islamic banking and finance as an exotic sub-school of neoliberal finance capitalism, albeit with fiqh compliance. No. Objectively, we should uh, reflect on this, and, um, and, and I think, notwithstanding whether you concur with these assertions, uh, the discourse must deal with this subject. Because without doubt, there is some basis, and uh, looking at the scenario, political economic scenario in the Muslim world, it has strong uh, resonance. Now, let me reflect uh, briefly on my limited experience now in Malaysia after more, slightly more than a year in office. The main problem with the somewhat impressive economic achievements, we do encounter problems of abject poverty, hardcore poor, I'm not talking about inequality. I'm talking about hardcore poor, people who do not have enough food on the table. Now, so in my first year, which is last year, I said there's no rhyme or reason for us to ignore this. We talk about Islamic economics, Islamic banking, to me, completely irrelevant if we do not tackle this basic issue. And alhamdulillah, at least we have figures in the four, first four main states of Kuala Lumpur, Selangor, Negesimilan and Melaka, we have resolved uh, completely the issue of hardcore poverty in these four states. I'm just waiting for more reports on this. <laughs> now, in the last year, shockingly, we talk about quality education, digital transformation, uh, food security, and energy trans, uh, transition, or oh, impressive terms. And of course, it is something um, that we have to address. But then in our schools, even lavatory is not being taken care of. Our children and grandchildren go to school without proper lavatories. And um, I instructed last year in the Ministry of Education, don't talk about quality education, repair the lavatories first. And we have to spend at least one billion ringgit. We repaired 8,640 lavatories. 
Can you imagine? I mean, to me, it is unacceptable if you talk in terms of uh, the more sophisticated, uh, complex issues, which, is, which has to be dealt with. But these are issues. Like this year, for example, we talk about housing, basic housing facilities for our police force, the armed forces, um, teachers, deliberated buildings not fit for occupation. And uh, we require another two billion. So I'm discussing with the governor, that's why I'm here. <laughs> to try and solicit some funds for this purpose. Now, why do I relate these issues? Because I think these are issues that is relevant and pertinent where discuss, we discuss Islamic economics or finance issues. Otherwise, there's total disconnect in terms of introducing instruments for Islamic finance, but there's gross injustice, there's disconnect between the stark realities that we have to face in this world. Now, so it is therefore commendable that this 15th conference, organized jointly by AUM, Ministry of Finance, the International Association of Islamic Economics show genuine collaboration between academia, industry, and policymakers. Now, the Madani concept introduced by my government puts forward an economic framework based on six principles, sustainability, care and compassion, respect, innovation, prosperity and trust. Now, guided by these principles, we aim to promote a new method of civilizational development, which we refer to very closely with uh, uh, Makhasid Sharia. On that goes beyond mere economic data and statistics that do not resonate with the ordinary people. Rather, it is a new developmental approach that benefits society now and that of the future. I imagine, I invite you now to imagine a future, a future economy. One that channels investments towards sustainable businesses, prioritizing environmental protection, responsible resource management, and renewable energy befitting our duty as stewards or vicegerents of Allah on earth to maintain the balance the wasata between nature and manifestation of the faith which is clearly amplified in the Quranic verse وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطَى لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا Second, an economy that places the people at its center, not institutions or instruments or individuals, but people that contributes to developing a caring, compassionate society, supporting comprehensive social safety nets, investing in community development, and abolishing poverty and gross inequality. Third, with a future society where prosperity has meaning to the many than the few, where unbridled capitalism yields to ethical inclusion, fair opportunities, and equitable wealth. Fourth, an innovative society developing not just new products and technology, but also ideas, solutions, and perspectives that challenge the status quo, and inspire progress. And fundamentally, a society built on trust where integrity, transparency, and accountability serve as the cornerstone of governance, fostering a sense of unity, cohesion, and collective responsibility over our shared destiny. This is our vision for a sustainable, humane economy, for Malaysians, for Muslims, and for mankind. Now, I made a specific reference 
to the issue of uh, integrity and accountability because there's clearly a deficit in our societies. Here we do focus strongly on the issue of good governance and uh, zero tolerance to corruption and mismanagement. We can't continue with that tradition that top professionals, top politicians, prime ministers and ministers use their position to amass wealth and squander the public purse for the interests of the families and the cronies. This, to me, is prerequisite for Islam and for meaningful reform, including Islamic economics. You can introduce impressive, sophisticated instruments, but it's poorly managed and squandered by corrupt leaders is not going to help. And I think, therefore, in all our deliberations and discourse, we need to put clear emphasis on the issue of integrity, into your values and accountability. Now, this is, of course, a collaborative effort. Academicians must continue to push the boundaries of knowledge, align the theoretical and ethical dimensions of Islamic economics, and develop practical applications aligned with these core Madani principles. Now, financial institutions, of course, must integrate these principles into core structures and decision-making process and ensure that their products are equitable and accessible. I must commend the governor for his initiative, introducing new instruments that show enough care and compassion. It is difficult to impress the bankers to think likewise. But uh, I've seen this, and I was uh, yesterday at the May Bank, our largest bank in the region, and um, I have uh, to acknowledge um, their efforts and uh, to introduction of many new instruments that show more care and compassion for the people, other than improving the issue of governance and the issues of integrity and accountability. Now, regulatory bodies must create enabling frameworks for innovation and incentivize and reinforce ethical conduct, not mere legalistic compliance. This collaboration must be met with an umat commitment with joint efforts to help realize this vision for a better future. Even then, achieving this will not be without obstacles. The path depends on the global financial system along with western <coughs> western centric models of development must be critically examined by thinkers unbridled capitalism limitless greed and the exploitation of this world's resources must give way to the principles of moderation equity and sustainability for the betterment of both current and future generations. With this, inshallah, we can realize a society rooted in justice and compassion. And uh, may Allah guide us and give us the strength, the wisdom to pursue this agenda. See. Kepada Governor dan Bank Negara memberikan ruang kesempatan ini dan saya doakan mudah-mudahan persidangan ini akan memberikan landasan yang kukuh kerana kerajaan Malaysia telah jelaskan dalam ekonomi kerangka ekonomi madani bahawa isu ekonomi Islam dan halal industri halal industri halal menjadi di antara keutamaan dan pandangan-pandangan saudara dalam sidang ini akan membantu dalam kerangka persidangan antarabangsa yang akan kita adakan insyaallah sekitar Mei yang dipersihkan oleh Saudara Amir Hamzah Menteri Kewangan Ketua. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terbaik sahabat-sahabat semua. Ha itu dia satu ucapan yang begitu padu sahabat-sahabat semua. Ya, memberi inspirasi ya khususnya 
uh, untuk negara kita uh, dengan konsep madani yang dinyatakan oleh Perdana Menteri kita kita harap dia perkara ini boleh membawa negara kita ke arah yang lebih baik lagi ya jadi mungkin walaun walaun tit mungkin tidak berapa faham ya sebab diselitkan dengan bahasa Inggeris di sana tapi apapun kita mengharapkan mereka menerima <laughs> mendengar apa yang dikatakan oleh Datuk Seri Anwar Ibrahim ini terima kasih sekali lagi izinkan saya ah, sekiranya anda mau berikan sebarang komen juga anda boleh berikan di dalam ruangan komen Terima kasih izinkan saya untuk mengundurkan diri dan seperti biasa peribahasa mengatakan tanpa pun kangkap dua ton keinginan dalam bahasa Melayu tebuk dada tanya selera sekian saja daripada orang yang dapat channel saya kita berjumpa lagi bye bye